So, here we are, map number four of this best of five. And well, the last game was incredibly, incredibly close. And I, it could have gone either way. But enough about the last game, and more about this one. Spawning in the north position of Polar Knights, the Green Terran player, Robbie G. And his opponent, to the south, the Blue Protoss, representing FM Esports, Orc. So, Orc starting his comeback. Is he going to be able to continue it on though? If he wins this game, he takes it to the ace match. If Robbie G wins, he wins the tournament. Congratulations, and he wins a £250 Gamecom Commander headset by Plantronics Gaming. Which way it goes, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. But Robbie G, in game number one and game number two, was looking dominant. But in map number three, Orc stepped it up. He went for a different build, which I was so, so glad to see. And then, actually, he started to make things look pretty good. Eventually went on to win. If Orc can do that same display again, he's got a fighting chance. And I say he's got a fighting chance because map number three was not a complete roll reversal. Orc didn't steamroll through to win easily. It was a nail-biting, punch-for-punch fight to the very end. So, it could still swing either way in another game like that, but it was certainly 50-50 who was going to win that last game. Robbie G, though, if he can bring back a performance that he had in game one and two, should be feeling pretty confident. Map one and map two, he was winning so... I don't want to say so easily, but so comfortably. It was really how he wanted to play, and it worked so well for him. So he's going to be able to... or he's going to be wanting to try to replicate that sort of performance. Of course, if you missed any games from this evening, all of the VODs are up on... are actually going to go up on my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash maddles91. So make sure you check that up. That'll be up after this finals is finished. Orc getting ready, or at least looking like he wants to take his expansion. That'll be the same build that he's done previously. He's gone for the double gas, the gateway. Um, just the one gate expand with the double gas into some heavy tech. For the moment though, Robbie G just still playing this the same way that he has every game too. The one Reaper into the command center into the reactor on the barracks. The Reaper making its way up and in. Needs to be a bit careful. Just backing out HHP there. Doesn't get the kill. Has got the kill in the past three matches. Is going to be able to come over though and get a little peek that okay, for the moment at least, it looks like there is no natural base from Orc. No but a natural base from Orc means that he's spending his money elsewhere. Where's that money going? When does this natural base come down? That's the sort of questions the Robbie G is going to be asking himself. This Reaper, though, gets denied. Beautiful placement of that Stalker by Orc. And Orc really will feel quite comfortable at the moment. He knows that he's denied scouting from Robbie G and that he can go about whatever he wants to do. If he continues on with the same pattern, next we'll see a Robotics Facility and then a Forge straight after. That's if he continues with the build similar to what he's done previously. Robbie G, though, is opening exactly the same as he's done in every map. Early plus one the command center, and then the tech lab comes down onto the barracks. So, just powering add-ons with that barracks early on. Going to switch that barracks over so he can start more marine production, but nothing too crazy. Orc, it looks like he wants to play the same way as he's done every map too. Adding in that robotics facility, and then the forge straight on after. So, okay, he's playing things as expected in his comfort zone. Whether or not he goes for the super quick tech up into Colossi, or a few additional gateways like he did in the last map, we'll have to wait and see. Logic would say that he'll go for the additional gateways, because that's where he won. But I have no doubt that Bobby G, he's going to be a lot more prepared for that earlier aggression. An orc right on cue adds in two additional gateways, so he is going to be playing this safer like he did in map number three, where he got the win. And Robbie G now has to identify that that's what his opponent's doing, as opposed to that really greedy play. Robbie G adding in the starport. He's got stim about a quarter done and plus one about two thirds finished. His natural base is up and running and he's holding this watchtower. Orc though, unlikely to be trying to move out too soon. Just pumping out a couple of observers, but now something completely new. A war prism 
coming down from all. This gives him a lot of ability to harass. Gonna be aiming to drop up into the main, potentially while pressuring into the natural base with some stalkers. Very viable build and a very potent build if executed well. Robbie G now switching over that starport with the factory, ready to start some medevac production. The factory also making its long journey to be the most expensive scout in SC2 to come and just take a little peek over at Orc's base. Orc, for the moment, should be fine though, because he's got these three gates, he's warping in more units defensively, and he's got great vision, nearly 200 energy on that mothership course, so nearly enough for two casts. Whether or not he needs to use both of them though, we'll have to wait and see. Robbie G though, he's left his main completely undefended. And that means this warp prism, if it's able to get in, and it catches Robbie G off guard without any units there, will deal huge amounts of damage. Robbie G's also rallying everything across the map. His rally points are aggressive. That means there's even less to defend here. But Orc also has to be cautious with when and how he spends his warpins. If he spends them aggressively over here as he's doing, with only three gates it leaves him a lot less to defend with. Second Immortal is popping out. Quick snipe down of the Observer, but the War Prism is heading up in towards the main of Robbie G. There is literally nothing here to defend with at the moment. One medevac is there, another warpin of a few more zealots is going to be coming through, and this is going to deal a lot of damage. One zealot gets surrounded with a nice stop micro command there. This means that if you stop the SCVs rather than attacking, they don't aggro or don't be a threat to zealots, and the zealots won't automatically attack them. So Robbie G takes seven worker losses, but it's not the end of the world. Meanwhile, he's also got a drop going in an orc's main base, where he's actually managed to equal that number of probe kills. Backing away those, he takes some more damage, tries to push him towards the natural, but force fields zone him out. The war prism getting ready to go back in, but there's more units here this time in order to defend. Robbie G not going to fall for that trick twice. The SCVs momentarily attacking, but the war prism picks them up and backs out. Both players trading blows. Seven to eight workers killed, one in favour of Orc, giving him a one worker lead at the moment. But of course, with mules, that actually favours Robbie G. The war prism is still available to be continued to use. Robbie G waiting for Foden Overcharge to run out. It probably will any second. But he moves in. Foden Overcharge triggered. Good force fields, but a lot of this army is forward. Focusing down. Not really too much. Nice little pickup from that medevac. A couple of units did go down. I think it was mainly probes focused there. But Robbie G, he's got to be careful because the War Prism is still playing around. The factory just scouting on through. There's a lot of sentries in position here for Orc. The War Prism coming back. Going to try and find another place to drop down. Another place to get some more damage done. A few marines sitting here. They're going to see that war prism coming out. But the zealot just starts chipping away. Meanwhile, Robbie G able to take out the natural base. Dealing a lot of damage here. Taking down those sentries. That's a significant gas investment. Orc losing his immortals. But Robbie G backing on out. He feels he's done enough damage there. And I'd actually agree with that. Taking out the natural is huge. He's half the, product or half the economy of Orc in one fell swoop. He doesn't need to overcommit. He needs to make sure that he's safe back at home. The war prism goes down. No more threats of drops. And the push still being very aggressive. One medevac carrying the former orders down to just 27 HP. So low. But Orc still unable to secure up his natural base again. Income wise, this is a massive lead now to Robbie G on the green coloured side. And he still continues on with this pressure. Medevac getting very low. The marauders with concussive shell kiting the zealots so effectively. A sentry dies. This medevac so perilously close to death, 16 HP. But things looking very good for Robbie G at the moment. Orc having to try to retake that expansion. But the third orbit command is also up for Robbie G here. That means that he's got an extra mule, an extra SCV per cycle. And Orc is still just sitting there with massive oversaturation of his, nat of his main or long range mining from his natural. Neither are ideal. Robbie G now moving forward. There's no force fields here. The Archon's getting some good damage down, but one falls, the second one, getting focused. The Zealots able to dish some nice damage out, as is that Immortal at the back with six kills. But GG is called as Robbie G takes the final 3-1, to one, and therefore wins himself a Gamecon Commander headset, and of course the pride of winning the finals.